Yes, you got that right. We know you certainly know how to use food with these monkeys. In this episode, I am going to briefly recap the monkey video mess we have on YouTube from its very beginning. I am going to shed more light on the connection between the production crews from both Angkor and Phnom Bro's temple. Before finally touching on the main subject that I will follow up in the third installment of this CSI series. Are you prepared for it? Let's go. And so as soon as filming began in Phnom Bros and adjacent Phnom Pros temples in December, 2018, two storylines developed simultaneously. Wichita, Nature Monkey, Pigtail Monkeys and others were responsible for the set involving Amy, who mysteriously had come up with a swelling in her back one day, with a clear entrance wound on it. Meanwhile, Animal Post, Adorable Wildlife and others were following the tragedy unfolding in Kaya's family, just a stone's throw away. But honestly, they all work together, just at different sets at different times, as you will find Amy's videos appearing in Animal Post's channel just as you will find Kaya's on Wichita's too. And they all come together on a big day to get the camera rolling, like the day they pretending to have taken Kaya to a vet for treatment. I think Song doubled up as a vet that day. Just look at that gold watch or bracelet there. Oh yes, Song does like to wear a gold watch or a bracelet from time to time. And I think that's him speaking too. I have to say his voice is so distinctive you could pick him out from his gang of cameramen. Just listen to his voice. Janet, don't worry. I bring you to meet your mum. And then... Boy. Okay. Wait. No, you're hungry too much. Don't stay with your mum. Your mum will crave your food. I could be wrong, but I think that's his voice. What do you reckon? She could not help but to hold her tongue out for pharyngeal spasm had set in. Her throat was closing up. Her diaphragm was in spasm. She couldn't draw in another breath. She died a horrible death. And so an orphan was made. The team did try to experiment with Brutus but it nearly backfired on them. They've learned that a dying animal could behave unexpectedly, causing them trouble in a very touristic place like Bayan Temple in Angkor Wat. But they have finally worked out the correct mixture to use, without ending up with another Brutus again. Besides, the non bros temple is off the beaten track, it's easier to hush things up. Just like how they disposed of Kaya's mother's body nearby, even in broad daylight. No one cares, no one ever bothers them there. 
there is certainly more creative freedom in Phnom Bros and likely elsewhere too where there are no tourists and authority around. And they are local, it's easier to get things done and under control there. And so a healthy mother who had just given birth to a healthy baby began to die at the beginning of every month, just like clockwork. Many viewers began to get suspicious when all these seemingly healthy mothers began to drop like flies shortly after they had been given a drink. No one cares, no one ever bothers these cameramen there. These semi-wild abandoned pet monkeys and their descendants are worthless in Cambodia. Stop Meanwhile another mother Nissa and her son Nico also died shortly one after another mysteriously. There were other deaths too that happened around the same time, but these are the few ones that I had looked into. <laughs> the way they laugh, tease and harm these monkeys, you know they don't care about them at all. These animals are considered pests, or least a nuisance there. <laughs> Basically the drama that comes with an orphan and the making of one could provide enough material for content purpose for a couple dozen channels for a few weeks and to kick off new channels to earn enough viewership to begin to earn ad money. Mishaps, injuries and death are the mainstay of these channels. Many people concerned by these mysterious deaths had messaged me to have a look into them. I think my investigative video on postpartum hemorrhage did help to raise people's awareness and put an early stop to these deaths and orphan production. Basically, these macaques could drag around a retained placenta for up to two months without an ill effect. They don't suffer from hemorrhage with this condition. Besides, a retained placenta is a rare condition in macaques, and we were seeing it almost every few weeks in a small troop of monkeys. It just didn't make any sense at all. But unfortunately we are powerless to stop the, the teasing and harassing that will continue, for there is a very big market for seeing a monkey baby in distress. Or an infant getting hurt. Just wanting to see horrible things happening to any monkeys. These cameramen will do anything to set these poor monkeys up for views. The same python just has appeared too frequently at either Phnom Bros or at Angkor for us to believe it's not brought there. After all they are known to have pitted a one meter long crocodile against the monkeys at Angkor in the past.
The most ambitious one to date however was the fake NGO that Sechun, Navy Tube, Song and others tried to okay. pull off last December. Yes. I am not going to go into details yes. again but that it was a plan yeah. long in the making starting with the alleged cull that they claimed had left them with many orphans in September last year. <laughs> They faked another case of retained placenta and rescued Dolly from the woods. They thought Dolly would wake up from a smaller dosage to make their rescue mission look good. Dolly probably would have survived had they not given her an antidote. Oops, sorry, dead as a dodo. Dolly hopefully was the last victim with the opioid potion they have learned to make from their friends at Phnom Bro's temple. The NGO was a dodo too shortly afterwards, but Sok Chun and his friends had already pocketed close to 30,000 US dollars in donation money so it was still a success financially. The last video he uploaded was of him and his girlfriend driving a car to visit a new built condominium somewhere. It's amazing how his fortune has transformed in such a short while. It was a live stream so the quality is pretty poor. He probably uploaded it to show off to his peers. This video was deleted not long afterwards. But they've made it to where they want to be at the end. Congratulations. 2020 looked set from the beginning to be another year with the same shit, though their scams are fast getting a bit long in the tooth. It's always a variation on the same theme. That's too clean and several inches too deep a cut through those thick blubber to be the work of either a dog or a male monkey. Nails can lacerate skin cleanly if it's thin, but never can it go any deeper than a centimeter or so. And neither mammals have canines that work like a saber, they can pierce in a bite, but can't slide through and cut cleanly like this. The back of all mammalian canines are flat. They are not sharp like knives. Not even a lion could do this. And here's the skull of a lion, the lingual surfaces of all canines are flat. Run your tongue to the back of your own canines to find out. That's how canines that stay inside the mouth are evolved. Otherwise we will cut our tongue on the back of our own canines by mistake. The canines are used to pierce and pin down an animal, a bigger wound result from such a bite is the result of a predator shaking and throwing its prey around, causing an extending wound, tearing in nature, and such a wound never has clean, straight edges to it. That just looks too strangely deep and clean to be natural. And by the way, where are the bite marks from both upper and lower dentition in it? This is getting old. Song and others have been doing it for a few years now. Don't stay with your mum. Your mum will crave your food. It's good for creating drama. And while a baby is with him, he could take him some distance away and pretends that it's lost and can't find its mum. There are many instances of either Lucas looking for mum or mum looking for him. It's uncanny. There is a vet, Trish Johansson in Seam Reap only a few minutes away since 2015. But they would never take any injured animal to her practice to be treated. They just want to drag on and on with as many videos across as many channels as possible each time how an injured animal struggles and the drama it creates. This way, they could make the most money each time. Point 3 always follows point 1 above without fail. There's been nothing new, not even old wine in new bottles. But suddenly an old genre is becoming popular again. When the virus hit, like many people, I lost my job. Suddenly I had some spare time. So I decided why not share what I found funny or interesting with you. A lot of people, including that arose fucker and the pet rat abusers of their channel monetized. That means they play an ad on their video and they get money. 
Well even though I hit the requirements for monetization, they told me to fuck off. I'm sorry mate, but shit like this does happen from time to time. And I accept it too. An investigative video like this takes at least a week an hour or two each day to make. And for the half a dozen I had made in the past, I didn't let YouTube run any ads on most of them from the get-go, so I had toiled for nothing as well. But I just wanted to get a message across. Do something for a reason, other than money sometimes. And if you really want to make a buck quick and easy, perhaps it's time to consider taking a monkey home, and let it works for you. Hold on, you don't want a grown-up like this. No amount of makeup will make it cuddly. Don't be dumb like this woman was here. You want a baby monkey. Like the same woman does now. God bless them she and her husband have finally worked out what clicks. Let's hope this one will fare better than the last one. Oops, speaking too soon, my bad. No one here is going to hold you 24-7 like your real mum does in the wild. The moment they put clothes onto you, you know you are only an experiment to them. You will be put back into a cage after a 10 minute long video each time. By the way what had happened to the one they showed a year or so ago. I hope it didn't get dumped. Anyway, using a baby monkey isn't something new, many Cambodian channels had tried it before. Like this one here, shortly after that fake NGO set up by Sok Chun, Song and Navy Tube went belly up. The channel owner got a monkey baby named Boom to create content. But it didn't generate much views, so the monkey was dumped after four months. And this one here even used an endangered species, a gibbon. Likewise, it didn't catch much views and we simply just don't know what happened to it after a couple dozen videos. But this round this practice is catching on, with a vengeance. The couple who runs the Navy Tube and Flow channels allege that this monkey baby had an inconsiderate owner. Her mother was an accident for a few days ago. And this one alleged that this baby's mother was killed in an accident. You can feel this little monkey. While this one was trapped and was rescued. So was this one too. It's amazing that almost all these supposedly wild monkey babies appear to be comfortable with a human owner from the get-go. You have to give it to this one though, the owner couldn't come up with a lamer excuse. Considering that monkeys are viewed as a nuisance in Cambodia, that person who had sent the channel owner this baby must have a grudge against him. Now he has to commit himself to look after a demanding monkey baby for at least a few months and to put up with a destructive and unruly animal for the next 20 to 30 years once its babyhood is over. Unless this man works in a coconut farm and is trying to raise a pigtailed monkey to pick coconuts for him, but so far, there is no indication of such. Basically, if you use the search function, you will end up with at least a hundred pet baby monkey channels, most of the old established ones are from Vietnam, but almost all the newer ones are from Cambodia, and most of these are actually the same old ones filming from either Phnom Bro's temple or Angkor. Some of them keep the same names, some don't. But they are all showing pet monkey babies nowadays. And they all seem to have bumped into a baby monkey somehow one after another, all within a short space of time. Everyone has somehow found themselves filled with love for these monkeys all of a sudden, and out looking for one that needs love and care. And without fail, every single one of them have managed to bump into a wild monkey baby needing rescue. It seems someone has finally figured out that it was far easier to earn money at home with a pet monkey baby, what's more, it saves them from going out filming uncomfortably in the torrent during the rainy season.
Besides, it's safer to stay at home during this coronavirus pandemic originated from Wuhan, China. <coughs> Bless you, I hope you didn't catch it from the owner of SR Channel. I have counted at least 16 pet baby monkeys, mostly pigtails across a dozen Cambodian channels that used to film in either Angkor or Phnom Bro's temple. Sometimes they get one after another, while the older one had just conveniently disappeared under one pretense or other. They have all used the same excuse that they have somehow been rescued from a terrible fate. Is this really so? Do they have a better life awaiting for them? But more importantly, where do these baby monkeys come from? How come it is so easy for them to find and own one? We will look into this matters in the next episode. Meanwhile, my dear viewers, you could have a taste of how we have arrived at the current mess we have with the many so-called monkey channels on YouTube. These two channels, one from Angkor and the other from Phnom Bros will showcase the downward spiral we are witnessing. Just click on video tab and sort the videos in chronological order. It will worth your while. Basically, it's a market-driven phenomenon. There is no love, no mercy for these animals. It's all about money.